if it's one thing I love to talk about, it is dinosaurs. And we've got this awesome new article from the Smithsonian. It is entitled, New Fossil Finds Track When Armored Dinosaurs Spread Around the World. Discoveries in Asia and Africa are rewriting the backstory of dinosaurs like the Stegosaurus. This is topical, isn't it, Purple Valkyrie? It is, absolutely, and we don't get to talk dinosaurs very often, so I'm looking forward to this. But yes, we can tie this in with the third and final Jurassic World film that has just been released, Jurassic World Dominion. So uh, let's, uh, let's have a look at the dinosaurs. I wonder if this article is going to feature how important feminism was to the Jurassic period, just like that movie's <laughs> marketing campaign. Anyway. Yes, yes. And talk about age gaps and, and that sort of thing. Yes. Mm, and the sexuality of dinosaurs. That's funny though, right? If dinosaurs weren't heterosexual, there would have never been dinosaurs. Anyway. <laughs> So what I find really fascinating at a high level is this, is that we've all been told you can't doubt the science. The science mm -hmm. can't evolve. Popular consensus, especially about the global weather, that's probably the best word I can use, about Ice Age impacts, about the sudden erasure of major megafauna on the North American continent. Because all of this was decided 100 years ago, there is absolutely no room for dissent. Well, as we're seeing with so many other areas of science, as the technology and the learning evolves, some of these discoveries are very inconvenient to people who claim to be the experts. Yes, and I've seen this multiple times. You know, people are so adamant that whatever they've discovered is correct, they will not entertain anybody else's views on things. But paleontology especially is one of those fields that just it evolves. <laughs> I mean, imagine that if you dig a little bit deeper, you might find something that's inconvenient to the narrative that allowed you to get a doctoral thesis. And boy, that probably didn't work. But so we all know what the Stegosaurus is. In popular depictions of paleontology, armored dinosaurs are often treated like icing on the mesiotic cake. It is only now that paleontologists are beginning to unravel the evolutionary epic of these armored marvels, especially in the past year. Paleontologists have described multiple new finds that outline how these armor encased dinosaurs spread around the world in the early chapters of their history. A lot of people have these preconceptions of these big lumbering stupid creatures, but the more we find out about them, the more uh, complex they seem to be the spiky stegosaurs and the heavily armored ankylosaurs belong to a particular dinosaur group called the Thyreophorids. For decades, it seemed that stegosaurs were the banner bearers for all armored dinosaurs, but they went extinct in the early days of the Cretaceous, or about 150 million years ago, but were replaced by an extensively ornamented ankylosaur. Now, discoveries in the past 30 years have altered that clean and neat story. How often do we see this Purple Valkyrie where people have created these narratives that maybe go back 100 years before mm -hmm. a lot of even our carbon dating or any of the asteroid research has been done? It's just repeated as gospel because the last generation of enlightened academics told people what to believe based upon their perceptions. It is, absolutely. They had these preconceived notions of what these creatures were like and how they interacted with each other. And actually, most people don't realize that the Stegosaurus and the T-Rex were actually further apart than we are to the T-Rex. These creatures never, ever existed in the same space and time, but people had these preconceived notions that all dinosaurs existed all at the same time. We are talking massive spans of millions or hundreds of millions of years. Meanwhile, the entire climate of the planet was in constant flux and not to mention we were being bombarded by sometimes catastrophic life-ending events in asteroids and coronal mass ejections. In the Morrison Formation here in the United States and the American West, paleontologists have found that the Stegosaurus lived alongside the Ankylosaur. Not only did they overlap in time, but that these living tanks spread around the world much faster than anyone ever anticipated. Far from being a dinosaurian sideshow, the armored dinosaurs were an evolutionary success story. So, mm -hmm. I mean, again, the, the thing that I take away from this is that 
even in our science, things are dogma. They're just repeated. Because if you repeat the narrative, it doesn't matter if it's paleontology or let's even say vi virology, you will get ahead in academia. Well, now the data is being unearthed. In the broad strokes, stegosaurs often had combinations of large flat plates along the midlines of their backs with long spikes on their tails. Ankylosaurs, by contrast, had heavier coats of armor that could take the form of pebble-like dots to massive spikes and even club tails. Man, how would you like to be chased down by one of those things? These things would have been formidable. You can see why they were so successful. It would have taken the top predators to take these things out, especially since a lot of these creatures were believed to move in herds. So can you imagine a whole group of these things protecting each other? I absolutely can. And I can also imagine some very bold predators going in and having an extraordinarily bad day. Mm -hmm. So experts are still unsure as to why these closely related dinosaurs evolved such different styles. But it might have something to do with the fact that dinosaurs often coexisted in the Jurassic and evolved different strategies to fend off, like we just talked about, predators. Stegosaurs used their spike tip tails in an active when large carnivores came close by. An idea that is supported by actual data in finds represented by injured bones of carnivore Allosaurus that seems to have been punctured by the swings of a massive stegosaurus tail. Ankylosaurs were more extensively covered in armor and may have evolved their bony coverings as a passive defense system, which could have made it difficult for Tyrannosauruses and other large carnivores to bite into them without breaking their teeth in the process. Mm -hmm. To quote a paleontologist from the University of Pennsylvania, that would be Shung Dun Bai, says they adapted in different niches, so these two groups coexisted for so long. So much of what a lot of us learned in high school and elementary, whether you went to school in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, it's going to change. Why? Because more data is coming in to challenge a narrative which was accepted by academics who accepted it because they wanted to get in their careers. All, all we want is real data. And all we want is when these finds come out, whether it be paleontology, whether it be asteroid impacts, whether it be ufology, we would like to know. And that's the real problem, isn't it, Purple Valkyrie? When we have these so-called self-appointed experts, they do not want to admit that maybe mm -hmm. they were wrong. And we're talking, you know, particularly paleontology. If you look back even to 100 years to Victorian times and you look at what they thought they knew then compared to what we know now, can you imagine yeah. where we will go in the future? If you think back to every kid has their favourite dinosaur, everybody loved dinosaurs growing up. Uh, what yeah. was your favourite dinosaur, just incidentally? You know, I always liked the Brontosaurus, and maybe that was because I'm going to blame it on Fred Flintstone because he, <laughs> it, that cartoon convinced me that Brontosaurus burgers were the way to go. But they look cool <laughs> too, right? What about you? They, they really did. My favorite will always be Triceratops. Oh. Uh, I think they are awesome. Yeah. Now I want to get like a some big dinosaurs to put behind me. This has been a lot of fun, Purple Valkyrie. Thank you so much for finding this article and sharing it with me. Well, thank you, and I, I would love to try and keep an eye on paleontology because this seems to be a study that's kind of finding new blood. And uh, if you think we, we didn't really hear much about dinosaurs and fossils, but now it's coming back to the forefront. And that is fantastic. It is encouraging that people are willing to admit new data into a preconceived notion of what the past was. I look forward to finding out more. Everybody, you take care. We'll see you on the next Phenomenal. Take care. As ever, this is Salty Texas Sea. I am Corey DB. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you've seen and heard, please hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you on board. That way you know and we have things like live streams, which we are going to be doing every Tuesday evening. Take care. I hope you're having a great 2022.